Hello, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jonathan, and I, I told you guys I wasn't going to be doing any teaching, but I didn't say I wasn't going to post some teachings, and I found a really good one for you guys. It's um, one of the most provable or, or the most provable doctrine in the Bible, and it's coming from uh, Brother Ar Arnold Bowen. He's got a small channel here on YouTube, and so I'm going to mirror his teaching, it is excellent. It's only 29 minutes, you guys. And if you don't have anything to do during your Sukkot time and you're watching videos um, and learning, this will be a good one for you. I would encourage you to go and subscribe to his channel. Um, so without further, uh, let me show you what we got here. Without further ado, Brother Arnold, one of the um, elders of our movement so this guy has got many years in study so please go and uh, check out his channel subscribe and uh, here you go greetings brothers and sisters in the name of Yahweh. it's brother arnold here again teaching and preaching that we have inherited lies and vanities and things wherein there's no profit there's no profit in lies. This goes for our calendar also. The calendar you have on the wall is not a scriptural calendar. And I want to give you not only scripture, but some historical information to prove it from somebody that lived back that day. I'll be reading from some of my notes here on the writings of Philo. Philo was from the tribe of Levi. He lived 20 years before our Savior was born and the 33 and a half years or whatever during the time of our Savior in the New Testament. And he lived 20 years after the crucifixion. Of course, I believe he was there on the day of Pentecost, but I don't want to get too much into all that, but I just want to read you some of my notes. And you're going to be amazed if you are interested in keeping the Sabbath, the correct Sabbath. And the Sabbath was originally by the phases of the moon. So were the weeks. And this is admitted to in your Jewish encyclopedia. They admit that the Sabbaths and new moons were by the phases of the moon. And I'll give you that information or you can go to my website here in a little bit if you want to. But I'm going to tell you about an eyewitness. <clears throat> he gives an eyewitness account how our Savior and the Jews of his day kept the weeks and the seventh day of the week. Now everybody believes in keeping the seventh day of the week. They just don't know where to start counting from. They say, oh, brother, on you count from creation. Well, you do, but you don't the way they're doing it. Anyhow, it's, it's not the way that they're doing it today. Remember Lamentations 2. And nine, I think it is, he said he would cause them to forget the Sabbaths and the feast days. Well, when are they going to forget it if he kept it from creation? When are they going to forget Saturday Sabbath, which I kept for many years? It was the best choice between Saturday and Sunday. But that's the way the devil does. He'll give you two choices, sometimes three, and neither one of them's right. He'll give you Saturday and Sunday. And neither one of them's right. He'll give you choices between baptizes and titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or the name Jesus. And neither one of them's right. You're baptized in the name. You gotta find out what the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is. It's Yahweh. Y H W H equal to our <clears throat> the yod hey wah hey in the Hebrew. It's pronounced Y-U-H-W-H, yuh, like in hallelujah, yuh, wah. But anyhow, you can look at my other video on the how to pronounce the sacred name and how a little child will pronounce it. I was said from out of the mouth of babes, he shall perfect praise. And things were hidden from wise and prudent talking about the scholars and people, and revealed on the base. But anyhow, <clears throat> if I keep getting sidetracked, I won't 
I don't want to make this over 15, 20 minutes. And if you go to the end, you'll definitely have to be, if you're interested in subjects, you'll definitely have to check in it out. Apostle Paul, you know, we had to check him out. He said, search the scriptures. The Messiah said to that, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. That's another different subject. But anyhow, Philo lived during the time of the New Testament. And you can ask, why are the writings of Philo, the Jew from the tribe of Levi, so important? Well, in the quest for historical evidence as it relates to this subject, Lunar Sabbaths. We have noticed that Philo is not often mentioned by those who support the traditional Saturday Sabbath or the Sunday Sabbath. The writings of Philo are very important for establishing Jewish practices and beliefs before, during the Messiah's time here on earth, and of course, like I said, 20 years after his death. Philo lived from approximately 20 BCE until about 50 CE. Thus, his lifetime spanned not only the years prior to the Messiah's birth, but also the years following his resurrection, not to mention the years in between. The evidence reveals that Philo's beliefs were representative of those of Judaism during that period of time. Philo, who was born and raised in Alexander, Egypt, was one of the more 1,000 Jews living in that city. When the perfect flexus F-L-A-C-C-U-S, if I you say that, initiated a massacre of the Jews in the year 39 CE. The all this is verified history. You can look it up. Anyhow, he uh, Philo was uh, selected to head a Jewish delegation that went to plead their case before Gaius Collagor. Yeah, I apologize for not being able to read these. So, but you can go to my website. You'll see all this. Now pause for a moment and reflect on the significance of Philo having been chosen from among his peers for such a monumental task. Would Philo have been chosen for such a mission if his practice and beliefs had not squared with those of Judaism? No, he would not have been chosen unless his views matched those of his peers. We know from Philo's writings that he did observe lunar Sabbaths. Now, if nominative Ju Judaism had practiced Saturday Sabbaths, while Philo rebelliously observed lunar weeks and Sabbaths, which his writings prove, he didn't have no bone to pick, no dog in the fire. He was just telling how they done things. Now, whether it's right or wrong, he tells you that's how they done it, the priest in the temple and the Messiah. And we'll get to that. But anyhow, uh, this detail, would it would have affected their decision to select him to lead a delegation to Rome. Absolutely, Sabbaths, Observance is one of the most distinguished marks of Judaism, as an author, Dayan Gerfield, whoever that is, put it. The Sabbaths epitomizes the whole of Judaism. In other words, everybody knows Jews kept the Sabbath, but it is. they admit they didn't keep it like they're keeping it today, and and that's in their encyclopedia and and, and other places. But we believe Philo did a pretty decent job. Of explaining how the weeks are connected to the moon which are covered in his book we feel that a major blow to Saturday Sabbatarian's theology involves that which Philo left out of his writings pertaining to any Saturday Sabbath not once did Philo mention another week other than the lunar cycle in determining the Sabbath day in fact the word Sabbath or Saturday's day 
isn't even mentioned not once in Philo's or these major feasts. It's not counted when counting out the four lunar weeks each month. He never counted the new moon. He, 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 he viewed that as a separate feast, the feast of the new moon, day of the new moon. And then just like in Ezekiel 46 and 1, he said, Yahweh said, the gates of his house that looketh toward the east shall be shut the six working days. And remember, six working days, but open on the Sabbaths and then the day of the new moon. That's eight days. You got your six work days, you got your Sabbaths, and the day of the new moon. That's eight days. New moon's not counted. They're counted as worship days along with the Sabbath. The Sabbaths and new moon are worship days. It's not counted. It's three different categories of days. But anyhow, I'll get off on the, something other than the historical evidence. I, I'm getting into scripture now. I wanted to sort of stay with how they done it during the time of our Savior. Now, wouldn't, wouldn't it make sense that an eyewitness, you know, eyewitness is very important, even in a court of law. You've got eyewitnesses. Even the Bible says everything be when you put a man to death, be established in the mouth of two or more witnesses. You can't put somebody to death other than that. And that's practice today. But anyhow, study these writings of Philo. There's an eyewitness of how things were done by the Jews in our Savior's day, including when a week begins and ends. We should not ignore the testimony of our witnesses when searching for the truth on how something was done. Here are a few of the many proofs of how Philo, the Jew in our Savior's day, understood weeks and Sabbaths. In order to have a lunar Sabbath, you must have a lunar week. Now, did Philo link Sabbaths or the weeks with the phases of the moon or not? It's there for you to look at. The answer is yes. In fact, the lunar weeks and Sabbath is the only week or Sabbath mentioned in Philo's writings. Let's begin with his writings. On maiden with the preliminary studies, chapter 19, verse 102, it says, For it is said in the scriptures on the tenth day of this month, let each of them take a sheep according to his house in order that from the tenth there may be consecrated to the tenth that is to God, he says, the sacrifices which have been preserved in the soul. Now he does, he does a lot of talk about spiritual and relates it with the way they've done things. He said, which is illuminated in two portions out of three until, and here's the important part, until it is entirely changed in every part and becomes a heavenly brilliance. He's talking about the soul being illuminated like the heavenly brilliance, like a full moon at the height of its increase at the end of the second week. Now back then, obviously, He's saying that the end of the second week, there's a full moon. The weeks were by the moon. You, you, you notice what Paulo, let it, let it sink in. His readers and fellow Jews of that era, or in those days, they understood that the weeks were by the moon. And that at the end of the second week, there would be a full moon. Just like if you've done it today. And there's no there's no other way. This this is not one of the major things. We'll get to it, but let that sink in a minute. Is there a full moon at the height of the increase at the end of the second week? The way you keep Sabbaths and weeks. Like I said, the Jewish Encyclopedia. If you look under weeks. It'll tell you they was originally by the moon, just like Philo was doing here. But Philo was making an observation how a person can be spiritually illuminated to a full brilliance, just like a full moon at the end of the second week. 
He just he just stayed there. He he didn't count the new moon when counting out uh, the weeks. And as these calendars do today, there was a man named Julius Caesar who came along, and he didn't like the way the the moon and sun was out of sync. See, the sun would go around approximately over 365 and a quarter days. And the moon is 11, 11 days shorter. I think it's 354 days. He booted the moon out and just made a strictly solar calendar that you go by, or most people go by today. And so you don't have a new moon worship day no more, like in Ezekiel 46, 1, to count the six work days out of that. New moon commemorates creation. See, in creation, that was the first day of the month in creation. Then he worked on his creation for six days. And then he rested the seventh day after the six work days. But if you count the new moon, that'd be the eighth day of the month just like they done. This is why I offer a $10,000 reward on my website to anybody that can pinpoint a weekly Sabbath that was not on one of these days, like the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th of the moon. It's just not there. But at my website, I pinpoint many weekly Sabbaths 72 that I think there's more than that pinpointing weekly Sabbaths and every one of them is on one of these dates of the moon not one is any other way I just want to pause here and just think about that for a second and every place that the Shabbat is mentioned in the scriptures, it's, it's one of those days, 8, 15, 22, or 29. That's incredible. What's really remarkable about this testimony, you guys, is he's, he's going back to a historical account, to people who didn't have a dog in the fight, like Philo, which Philo lived during the time of Yeshua. So that tells you historically what they were doing. And this is why Yeshua didn't have to address the calendar. Every time he came against the Pharisees, it was on a Talmudic law. Just like, you know, wearing the kippah, that comes from the Talmud. That don't come from the Torah. Hypocrite. So he was calling out the Pharisees. Remember the washing of hands, all this kind of stuff that comes from the Talmud? Not one time does Yeshua address the calendar. Or the Shabbat. Why? Because there was no problem with it at that time. As history records, it wasn't altered until 322 and further. Altered to what? Well, if in the time of Yeshua, they're going with a lunar solar calendar, 8, 15, 22, 29 is the Shabbats. Saturday was not a thing. That did not come until later under the Roman rule. Period. It didn't come from Babylon. Didn't come from Greece. That was that was Rome that did that. Just like the lunar solar calendar does not come from Greece. It does not come from Babylon. <laughs> Daniel took it to Babylon. He was made chief over the wise men. Which means what? He was learning from the Babylonians? No, he was teaching the Babylonians. Doesn't make any sense that he would be learning from him and he's made head of all of the wise men. And incidentally, this is how the wise men found Yeshua because they understood the stars and how they worked. Let's continue. You know, if you uh, think about like the crucifixion, it says the Sabbath drew on. Talking about the weekly Sabbath. And it says that Sabbath day, talking about that weekly Sabbath day, was also a high day. It was the first day of unleavened bread. Which happens every year, you guys. It's called a high Sabbath. Every year, that festival falls on the Sabbath, and it's called a high Sabbath. 
and the preparation was on the 14th. That's when they crucified him. The 15th is a Shabbat. And a high The 15th was a week of Sabbath. Now, when they came out of Egypt, they, did, they didn't get to keep the Sabbath in Egypt, but when they came out in the book of Exodus there, Exodus 16, it talks how... This is where you see who will give the Shabbat to the people. It's not at creation time. By the way, that's a different scale anyway. Yahuwah's day is not the same as a man's day. Okay? He gives us an example, an archetype, a pattern that he will later reveal to us in chapter 16 of Deuteronomy. That is the first place he gives the Shabbat to his people. Now, here I am getting back in scripture again. You can and by the way, this is the one chapter that I can prove the biblical calendar from one chapter because it gives you the layout of the days, the pattern of the days and the count. All this from website, but it talks about how he made his Sabbaths known to Moses and him. And it was on the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th. That's when he made it known to them. That's the way it is in the Old and New Testament. <coughs> But anyhow, let me, let me continue on with this. I don't want to. I also find it really interesting that this guy offers a $10,000 bounty. If you can prove the Saturday, seven-day continuous Shabbat. Prove it by the Bible alone. Because at the same time, you have to disprove what the scripture says. too much in the scripture, I want you to go to my website at lunarsabbath.info by information, I-N-F-O, lunarsabbath.info. Check it out for yourself. The weekly Sabbath is not Saturday or Sunday. That's some of the lies that we inherited. The Bible actually says that we're going to come to him, not a lot of us, not many. He said many shall come that day and say, truly our fathers have inherited lies. Inherited lies. Interesting. Don't you find it really suspicious that the, the Zadok people who are keeping peace of atonement today, no regard to the moon, also keep a Saturday Sabbath, just like the Jews. I don't, I don't understand the confusion there. It's exactly like the Jews. You're even wearing... The kippa, but then you talk about synagogue of Satan. So you're the, the most contradictive person I've seen in a long time. And vanities, and things where there's no profit. And again, there's no profit in lies. It don't profit you a bit. Nobody grows up wanting to be a false prophet. It just happens. A little child don't say, "Mama, Daddy, I, I want to be a false prophet when I grow up." It, that ain't the way it works. But anyhow, on here, the Decalogue, chapter 30, verse 149, it says, But to the seventh day of the week he has assigned the greatest festivals. It's talking about the seventh day of the week is assigned to the greatest festivals. Greatest means the largest when you have the uh, Pentecost, it's not like a two or three day feast, but the greatest festivals is like Passover and Tabernacles. They're seven day feasts. They last seven days. But he assigned the, the, them to the seventh day of the week. In other words, they both begin on the seventh day of the week, which is the 15th, at, at, at near the plump moon, the full moon, plumpness of the moon. And he assigned these greatest festivals, those of the longest duration, said, at the periods of the equinox, both vernal and autumnal. I'm talking about the one in March and one in September. But the weeks were by the moon. And in each year, he said, in each year, appointing two festivals for these two epochs, which you have to look at up at appointed times, each lasting seven days. 
the one which takes place in the spring being for the perfection of what is being sown and the one which falls in autumn being a feast of thanksgiving for the bringing home of all the fruits which the trees have produced. Now look, look carefully at what follows saying. But to the seventh day of the week, he has assigned the greatest festivals. In other words, the greatest or longest festivals have been assigned to the seventh day of the week. You remember over where it said in the morning of the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it? Well, morning of the Sabbath is the 16th. Josephus records that they waved it on the 16th, the wave sheaf. If I get started on that, I'll get into another, another thing. I'm trying to just stir you up enough that you shall go to my website, lunarsabbath.info, and look at all the information, scriptural and historical. But anyhow, he says right here that both of these festivals lasted to the seventh, uh, or signed to the seventh day of the week. <laughs> you can't get no plainer than that, which is 15th. They both signed the 15th. They go for seven days. Another place he said there's two seven days in that. There's two seven days in them festivals. Well, what are they? One, it begins the festival on the 15th, seventh day of the week. And the other is the seventh day of the feast. See, a seventh day can be a seventh day of anything. But you can look at my article on scriptural seventh day what is the seventh day of the week but anyhow follow goes on to say that each month talking about the first and seventh month should receive a special honor of one sacred day of festival one sacred day in the seventh day feast <laughs> now if you were keeping Saturday Sabbath well that's most of the time it's going to be a Sabbath that ain't on the 15th or the seventh day of the feast. And, but he only talks about they gonna be one sacred festival in, in each of these feasts. That's the one that begins these feasts. It's not Saturday. So you can't, Saturday won't line up every time on that. But anyhow, he said it's for purpose of refreshing and cheering the mind with its holy day. Notice he did not say they would receive two holy days of festivals, but one. That's the 15th. To prove the seventh day of the week is the same as the 15th elsewhere, follow states. Again, the beginning of this feast is appointed for the 15th day of the month. Talking about up to seven day weeks. On account of the reason which has already been mentioned, he goes on to say, respecting the spring season might receive special honor of one day of fest festive. Talking about the week of Sabbath. And then it go, that's, that's, that's located in the 10th festival, chapter 33, verse 210. In other words, follows saying the weekly Sabbath begins each feast and is on the 15th. This proves the Sabbath by the lunar I hit my button here and I knocked myself off the page where I was at. <clears throat> Have you ever done something like that? Anyhow, this proves let's see, if I didn't count, I've got to find back <laughs> where I was at. Brothers and sisters, bear with me. You know, I'm working on this YouTube stuff, and I'm going to be posting one and show you some of the lies we inherited, this being one of them. I'm going to try to post one about every week. And I want to get what I put behind me, the scriptures and, and the reference you can look at while I'm talking. But you go to my website. But anyhow, I've done, I've done, I got so much more I, I, I could say, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop it right here. I'm just going to talk just one, one or two more minutes if you'll bear with me. If you go to YouTube, just type in Arnold Bowen, 
A-R-N-O-L-D, B-O-W-E-N, and you can get all my things that I have up there so far. And you'd be amazed at how many lies we've inherited concerning Pentecost, the count of Pentecost, the weekly Sabbath, who the Son of God really is. You would think, well, everybody knows who the Son of God is. No, they don't. Matter of fact, the Antichrist killed him for making himself God. See, God filled three offices. That God that created the heaven and earth, he was a Holy Spirit. God is holy. You say, well, the Holy Spirit, God's separate. No, they're not. The Bible said God is holy. The Bible said God is a spirit. And that Holy Spirit spoke heaven and earth into existence. That, that was Yahweh. Hallelujah. That was Yahweh. This same Holy Spirit overshadowed the virgin. She conceived. She conceived of the Holy Spirit. That conceived in her, the Bible said, is of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit, the, the Son didn't have two fathers, God the Father and the Holy Spirit the Father. One Holy Spirit won't send another Holy Spirit to do his job. But anyhow, Yahweh, the creator of heaven and earth, was manifested in the flesh. Paul said it's a mystery, but he's seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, received up in the glory. Paul only knew one God. He said God was manifested in flesh. You read John 1, 1 through 14. And just go on my website and find some of this stuff. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get carried off into something else. But anyhow, I thought I would share this. It's much, much more. But when you go over to my website at lunarsabbath.info, Look under Messiah and Lunar Sabbaths. You'll be amazed to all the conclusive evidence. See, it's not conclusive that they kept up. You a one a, a, a one through seven cycle uninterrupted is mathematically and scientifically impossible if you had people migrating uh, from Israel around the globe, some going east and some going west. And when they meet on the other side of the earth, they would be on two different seven days of the week doing it like that. That's why he didn't choose that. But that's all I'm going to cover it on fine. But anyhow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to end it right here. But I appreciate all my listeners. And, and we're going to get to a bunch of stuff. I'm, I'm going to start putting it up there. You guys go over and uh, subscribe to his channel. Also go to his website. This man is offering a $10,000 bounty. If you could prove this, the uh, Shabbat that you're on, Remnant House, I'm, I'm sure you could use that money, right? Go and prove it. See, this is what bothers me about people who like to declare something. You can't show it with, with the Bible. You won't debate nobody because I'm going to throw Bible at you through the whole thing. And you're going to want to talk about Jubilees because that's all you can talk about. $10,000 bounty. Prove it's a Saturday observation. Seven day uninterrupted. You just completely ignore the new moon. And a new moon is supposed to be a set apart day. We're blowing shofars on that day. We're, we're, we're worshiping on that day. We're also marking off the months. That's why it's called Rosh Chodesh, the head of the month. Then you start your weekly count. That is the biblical clock, the calendar. And I stand on that firmly. And I'm so blessed and thankful that so many people are coming into that truth now. Really are. It bothers me that, that some teachers will take advantage of simple-minded people and, and lead them astray into Saturday observance, just like Judah's doing. And, and don't get me wrong, I love Judah. I'm surrounded by Jews. But they can themselves can tell you what Rosh Kodesh means. They themselves can tell you, oh, it was a lunar 
uh, calendar, but Hillel changed it around 300. So they didn't even know the history. But you got some teachers out there that want to twist history, twist things to, to their own interpretation, and they cannot use the Bible to prove one, one stitch of it. What's the, what's the use of wielding the Bible if you can't wield it effectively? You can't prove your doctrine. So, guys, go and check it out. Uh, take up his challenge if you can prove the Saturday Shabbat. Brother, Brother Arnold's got $10,000 for you. Shalom. Enjoy your feast.